Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review of a Backman tank engine. So, back in January, Backman announced that they would be re-releasing today's tank engine, and because of that, I thought, you know what, this is a good opportunity, or excuse, I suppose, uh, to get mine out again and do another review. It's been a long while, anyway, since uh, since I did my review, so it's time to revise it. So, the loco is this. It is the Backman LMYR Class 5, and this is a fascinating locomotive. In fact, I think it's unique in my collection. I think it's the only locomotive, tank engine or otherwise, that has a 242 wheel configuration. It's really, really unusual and if you haven't seen one of these before you'll probably be uh, slightly mind blown when you finally see it. Anyway, so the original list price according to Hatton's was £114 something, 95 I think it was. Now it seems as though the price has been put up because on Backman's website right now the pre-orders for this are going for £129.95. Now to be honest with you I would have said these were expensive enough in the first place and especially since this is now a few years old, Backman aren't having to pay for the tooling anymore for example that's all sort of the cost for that has been long covered I would have thought you would expect the price to be starting to come down rather than going up so it's a little bit of a shame as it happens though Hattons are taking pre-orders for the new version of this for £110 so it's still cheaper than the old list price or if you're not bothered about which livery you go for I think they've still got the BR Black version in stock for £77 and that is a crazy bargain in fact I wish I'd have got mine for, for that anyway there's a link in the description if you want to pick some of these up they are really really lovely engines on this occasion obviously I've already opened this up and seen it before because I've had it for a few years but it has been a long while since I've talked about this so I can't wait to get this out and to be talking about it again so let's get it out then the LMYR class 5 tank engine all right, so there it is then. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to this, actually. I can't wait to get this thing running again. So as you can probably tell by looking through the front of the box there, mine is in the LMS Crimson. And this one, as you can see, is carrying the number 10715. Although I think the LMS Crimson version that Bankman are due to bring out uh, later, I don't know whether it's this year or next, uh, is a slightly different running number. I think it's 10730. And also another thing worth pointing out is that among the new versions that Bankman are bringing out is the LMYR Black version. Version, I think it is and if you haven't looked at that already if, or if you haven't seen it definitely check it out the livery on that is absolutely gorgeous it's sort of like a aligned black and yeah it looks fantastic I was very very tempted to pre-order one but I thought uh, you know I've got to I've got to restrain I can't buy every single new logo that comes out anyway let me show you the side of the box then or the end of the box you can see the product code for mine is 31-168 it is the LMYR 242 tank as we've already said number 10713 and yes it is in the LMS Crimson and it takes a six pin DCC decoder if that's what you wanted to use to chip it and then very briefly I will just show you the back of the box and yep as you can see there there is a brief history so as always feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to but I will give you a little bit of history on these in uh, in just a second okay so here we go it's been ooh, probably nearly four years since I last opened this box and uh, unboxed the LMYR tank so let's get it out then and uh, let's see how it's fared over the years shall we I think it was relatively I think it was a relatively new model back in those days not so much now but it's still very lovely as far as I can remember so there it is you can sort of see it there through the packaging uh, let's get it out straight away then let's waste no time and we will have a very quick look at some of the paperwork in fact we'll just look at the uh, the exploded diagram shall we if that's what we've got inside here it looks like it yes so as you can see there's the exploded diagram of all the parts you can see it's relative well it is modern it's got the can motor and pickups and it's not a split chassis or anything like that as i say this loco is from relatively recent years anyway and then on the back yep you've got all the usual backman hints and tips about running in what sort of curves it will take how to remove the body etc i remember it being quite a lot of fun to uh, dismantle this loco for servicing and not something i like to do particularly with this one but it's not too bad with a little bit of care you can usually manage it okay okay so let's get this out then i can see this tiny little detail back on the top uh, so i think we'll uh, take off the sleeve and take a look at that to start with and I say detail pack, it's probably more accurate just to say a bag with a couple of screw link couplings in there. But that's fair enough, it's nice that you've got those and you've got the option to fit them if that's something you want to do. But uh, as you can tell, there I, I never have, I've uh, always left mine in the packaging. Okay, so let's get this out then, the LMYR Class 5 tank. And what a lovely thing this is. All right. 
So here it is then, and it weighs a ton. In fact, I'd, you, normally when you're just uh, when you're not reviewing a loco and you're just looking at it or running it, you don't notice things such as the weight. But uh, when I'm in review mode, you really, really do. And I will I will weigh this in a second uh, just so that you get an idea of the weight. But this weighs an awful lot. Now there is quite a lot of diecast on this, as far as I know. The running board is clearly made of die cast, as often is the case from Backman, and you can tell that just by putting your fingers on it. It feels cold to the touch, and it's also very, very thick and chunky, so no doubt that's where the bulk of the weight comes from. Uh, the rest of the construction appears to be plastic, but it's that sort of good quality Backman plastic, which uh, always confuses you as to whether it is actually plastic or die cast. But apart from that, yeah, just look at it. It is absolutely gorgeous. The 242 wheel configuration is very, very unusual, and as I say, as far as I know, there are no other locos that I own which have that wheel configuration so it's really really nice. Okay so here's a brief history of the LNYR class 5s then and as soon as I've gotten through that I will show you this beautiful model and it is beautiful up close. All right let's do it. So the class 5 as you can tell originated from the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway in 1889 to the design of John Aspinall. These handsome tank engines were generally used for small passenger services on track with quite steep gradients, which might surprise you, with some even being fitted with push-pull equipment. Over 300 examples were produced between 1889 and 1911, with several variations and revisions being made along the way, such as the addition of smaller cylinders, I think for greater power, larger water tanks, obviously to increase the capacity, and also bell pair fireboxes. The class were rather unique in that they were also fitted with water scoops, which was a feature usually only seen on tender engines. The class largely survived into the BR period, although some early withdrawals did take place, I think, in the 1920s. The rest of the class were withdrawn before 1961, and only one example was preserved, and I think it was the first ever built, actually, number 1008, which is currently not running, it's just static, I think, but it is at the NRM. Okay, so there is a nice close look at this one for you, and I must say, everything about this is really, really impressive, even down to the build quality. It is basically spot on as far as I'm concerned and I don't often find myself saying that about a Backman model so definite kudos there. So as I've already mentioned then there's an awful lot of weight to this and I have weighed it and it comes in at 260 grams so very very heavy especially for a tank engine of this size. That's starting to approach the weight of the Oxford N7 which I don't think was an awful lot more than that. Uh, so yeah it's very very heavy which is great obviously because it's only got a couple of driving wheels there uh, per track obviously it's got four in total. Uh, which means it might tend not to be the greatest puller in the world, but with that extra weight, it certainly is going to be better than it might have been, isn't it? Okay, so let's start with the painted detail then, because as you can see, this has been painted into a very, very handsome crimson livery. And there's quite a bit of lining as well, as you can see, just behind the smoke box, we've got some lovely lining there, which is very nicely applied. It's only a single line, so there's not much really to go wrong with it, but it is nice to see it looking as sharp as that. The side of the tanks, of course, are nicely painted up as well. You've got more of that yellow lining around the edges, as well as the running number there, which again is very nicely applied, even if you look very closely, as you can tell. You've also got this, I think it must be an LMS emblem on the coal bunker there. And again, it's a very, very complexly printed piece is that. In fact, I can't really make out the lettering around that, but I'm sure it will be legible. But uh, yeah, if I can get a close enough shot of that, we might be able to read that. Uh, on the side of the cab, you've got more lining, as you can see, with the, I suppose that must be the class there, the, the number five there on the little plate, which is great to see. And even the wheels, as you can tell here, have got the lining on them. And once again, sometimes I've had slightly clumsy lining on the wheels from Backman, but I can't fault these. As you can see, they've been done really, really nicely. And of course, that yellow lining is carried throughout the entire model, which is really, really attractive. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the other details then. Now, something I really like about this is the amount of detail that is actually die cast. So the first and probably most noticeable one is on top of the cab here. You can see we've got this very nice die cast whistle, uh, as I say, separately fitted and made of metal, not plastic, which is, uh, which is crucial, I think, in order to make it look realistic, in my opinion. I suppose some people might disagree. The safety valves, as you can see, once again, nice die cast pieces there. And again, in my opinion, the realism is enhanced as a result of that. The running board also, just look at the metallic finish on this running board and as far as I'm concerned you can't get that metallic finish with plastic there's just something about um, die cast which brings out the realism in a running plate like that and as you can see it's very detailed in terms of rivets as well very well done is that even underneath the boiler you can see there is some representation of the workings between the frames I'm not absolutely sure where the cylinders would be placed on the prototype I can't see any between the frames there but uh, possibly that is prototypical 
Either way, you can see there is some, uh, some level of detail down there. The buffer beams are also very nicely detailed. As you can see, we've got the vacuum pipes pre-fitted, which is nice. And just behind there, by the way, you can see we have these separately fitted lamp irons. You've also got sprung buffers, which again, just suggests that stops have been pulled out with this model, which is great to see. The smoke box door is relatively well detailed as well. I don't think this one opens. I could be wrong, but uh, again, I, I don't really like clawing at them in case they don't open and I damage them. But as you can see, you've got the running number on a nice plate there, as well as a separately fitted smoke box start, which is great to see. There's no clumsiness to the model, to be honest with you. Even the handrails, as you can see, are nice and fine scale, nothing too chunky about that. You've got these lovely suspension springs on the front here, which are just dummies, of course, they don't really do anything, but uh, again, nicely molded and they do look the part. I also really like the steps on this model. Look at the shape of those. There's a real stylistic shape going on with those steps as they sort of curve. They're all nicely painted as well, and there are four sets of steps around the model as well. So there's uh, quite a lot if you're a fan of steps. I don't know, maybe, maybe you are. Uh, but yeah, there's an awful lot to see on this steps front. The cab is very well detailed as well. You can see we've got glazed windows on the front and back. Let's try and get a shot of both of those with lining around them, of course. Inside the cab, there's not a massive amount of painted detail. In fact, I would say the majority of it is largely unpainted. However, there are a few different controls and I think it's the water gauges that have been picked out there. There are certainly no gauges that have been picked out with the numbers and dials on them and things. That is a bit of a shame. It's quite a basic cab, I would say. Uh, it's probably one of the more basic from Backman in recent years, but it's also a relatively enclosed cab, so I don't suppose that's uh, gonna have too much of an impact on the realism of the model, especially if you decide to put some crew inside there. That would help to mask it a little bit. And then around the back, you can see once again, we've got the usual sort of Backman style coal, which is a bit on the glossy side, but it looks just fine if you ask me. You've also got that coal guard around the bunker, which I always really like. Uh, for some reason, I just like the way those look. They uh, just bring a certain, I, don't, I suppose, old fashioned look to the locos, uh, which I always seem to enjoy. So that's quite nice. That gets a thumbs up. And then around the back, once again, just look at the level of detail on the back of the coal bunker there. Really, really nicely uh, riveted is that. And once again, around the back, you can see we do have the vacuum pipe separately fitted as well as the lamp irons and also more sprung buffers and the NEM coupling is fitted at the back as well. I can't remember whether there was one fitted on the front out of the box. I would probably say not, but maybe there was, maybe there was. Either way, there is a pocket there if you wanted to fit one to the front. And I should also say that the brake rigging has been pre-fitted as well, as you can see underneath. Well, you might not be able to see it, but I promise it is there, which is great to see. Now, I have been reading about these Class 5s, and apparently they did have water scoops fitted. However, I can't see one on the bottom of the loco. So whether that's just a hole in my knowledge or not, or maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can't seem to spot any water scoop under there. However, I would wager that it's unlikely that Backman have omitted that as a mistake. There's probably a reason for that. Maybe this version didn't have water scoops. I'm not absolutely sure. But as I say, it's unlikely that that's an oversight on Backman's part. So as you can tell, the livery and the quality of the model is spot on and obviously the detail level too. As far as I'm concerned, in my limited knowledge of the prototypes, this is a beautiful, beautiful model. The only criticism I've got really, as you can probably guess, is the price. The new RRP of £129.95 just seems far too much for me. Uh, for this model. True, there's nothing wrong with it and it is all done to a high standard, but it's just when you start comparing it with models from other manufacturers and one that springs to mind is the Oxford N7 because it's a similar size and a similar weight, except of course there's an awful lot more die cast on that particular model and also the level of separately fitted detail is a lot more complex as well. Now the RRP for those was £109.95, so that's 20 quid cheaper and the level of detail, the quality, the complexity is the same as this, if not slightly better. So the high price, as I always seem to say, of these Backman models is a little bit baffling. Uh, I don't know why they have to be so expensive, but that's fair enough. If other manufacturers come along and outprice them and produce better models, that is gonna have an effect on the market. And I think, well, I hope, in order to survive in the future, manufacturers will have to provide excellent products at an excellent price or risk going under. So that's absolutely fine. We'll see what happens with that. But as I say, the N7's a brand new model, just come out this year. Um, it's certainly not a model that's been on the market for five years, such as this one. So I can't see why well, nearly 130 pounds is justified for a model like this. However, there's nothing I've found on this model that I would really criticize. Uh, so as I say, yeah, it's not too bad. Let me know in fact, is 130 pounds reasonable for this or would you rather pay less? I certainly paid less when I bought this a few years ago. Okay. 
Okay, so let's talk a bit about performance then. Let's get this down onto the track and see how she runs. Okay, so there she is then down onto the track, and I'm sure you'll have to agree, she looks absolutely gorgeous, doesn't she? So provided she still works all right, she's going to be coupling up to just two coaches. I'm keeping the load pretty low today for a certain reason, um, but uh, yeah, she should be looking lovely with those anyway. So let's talk about the mechanism then on this particular loco. Now, normally I've got quite, well, I normally don't have very many nice things to say about the Backman mechanisms, but with this loco, that is not the case because the mechanism in this is actually pretty pretty decent. Now it does only have a basic three pole motor inside it, uh, which is the case with many Backman Locos. I don't particularly like that, but the wheel set on this model does actually use a proper set of bearings, which I do like, and it does seem to reduce wear on the axles and on the chassis and things. So that's a really nice mark of quality. Another slight issue with this is the pickups. Now the driving wheels do have pickups on them. Each, well, each of the four driving wheels do. Now, looking at the underside of the model, there are no visible pickups on the non-driven wheels, which is obviously quite um, an issue with a Loco with so few wheels on it. However, when I did take this apart to service it, you can see that there is a contact which goes to each axle of these non-driven wheels. Now, I wondered whether those contacts were just to help spring the wheels down, for example, to keep them down on the track, but it turns out that when you apply power to them, they are making contact with the motor and they are actually helping to pick up. However, only one of them works. It's only the back one that works. I've tried to sort of power the front axle here and uh, you know provided power through one of the other wheels and I can't get that one to work and it never has all from from the very start when I first investigated this. Uh, so yeah for a loco with so few wheels only three quarters of them pick up which mean that you might get issues on point work and things especially as the loco runs in and the wheels start to get a bit dirty which means that once again this is one of those locos that has to have its wheels kept very very clean uh, which is fine you know but it's just it's just remembering to do it isn't it. But yeah it's a shame that the pickups don't work properly. Um, I suppose I will have to look into why that is. Uh, the pickup is making good contact on the axle, so I think it's just a wiring issue somewhere that I'll have to investigate. Okay, so that's that. The other thing is I have had motor problems with this. Um, it was about perhaps a year or two years ago. This loco was running along quite happily and it slowed right down. It might have even been on video. I can't remember if anyone will have seen that or not. I might have edited it out. Um, but it slowed right down to a crawl and it emitted smoke as these Backman models often do. And uh, yeah, I thought that's it then. That's the end of that. However, I did dissect the motor. I took it to pieces and cleaned the commutator and cleaned the springs and the brushes and everything in the vain hope of trying to restore it. And amazingly, ever since then, it has been absolutely fine. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Backman motors, to be honest. They do let you down quite a bit. And uh, I found that I can't lubricate them at all, basically. I found that the oil, even if you use a tiny amount, seems to work its way onto the commutator and uh, damage things. So I don't actually oil the motors themselves. I oiled, oil the gear train and everything, but not the motors themselves because it always seems to go wrong. And I am careful not to over oil. As I say, I've done this for a, a lot of years, so I know how much oil is uh, too much. Anyway, I digress. Let's give this a little bit of juice then and see how it can crawl. Now this is one of those locos that seems to have a bit of an odd gear arrangement where it seems to run very, very fast, even at a medium speed, uh, which means that at the slower speeds it's not absolutely fantastic in terms of its crawl. However, as you can see, I don't think you would really complain at that, would you? Let's try and get it to do that again. Oh, it's cut out. Yeah, you see what I mean? It could do with a bit better pickups, really. It'd be better if all wheels picked up. There we go. So as you can see, even though I think it uh, stopped again, honestly, and I only just cleaned the track actually, so it's certainly not the track's fault. Hmm, <laughs> it's not handling very happily now, is it? Either way, let's try and get it forward, see if we can do it there. Yeah, there we go. It's doing it a bit more reliably now. As you can see, not too bad, not too bad. And uh, another thing is, while I remember, I've also tested the pulling power, and it, despite the weight of the loco, it's actually surprisingly weak. <laughs> it only pulls, well, the pulling force, for example, is 0.2 newtons, which is very, very low. In fact, it's the lowest of all that I've recorded so far. Um, it's about half that of the Backman K3, which I think is a similar sort of weight. And even the Mahano Camelback, which is very plasticky and lightweight, has a pulling force of 0.34 newtons, so this is only two-thirds of that. So yeah, that suggests to me that perhaps the non-driven wheels are taking a bit too much of the weight on this and diminishing the pulling power a bit. 
However, it can manage a fair few coaches without a problem, so it's not a criticism at all. It's just an observation that given the weight, I'm surprised it doesn't pull better. Right, let's go and couple to the coaches then and see how that goes. We are nice and steadily, does it? I can't remember whether these coaches are mainline or backmen. I think they are backmen, but I'll have to double check. Whoa, okay. Right, well, there's no secret that she's going to be able to pull these just fine. So let's get her started, and I'll show you what else is going to be running. So the theme today is going to be pre-grouping tank engines. Uh, some of them do also have some weird wheel configurations as well. So here's quite an unusual wheel configuration. It is, I've mentioned this already, the Oxford N7. Absolutely wonderful model. Let's get this in. With some teak coaches, yep, there it is, absolutely love that one, a gorgeous, gorgeous model. So that's that, and then on the inside line I have a loco that I don't show as often as I ought to. In fact, I've heard horror stories about the motors in these, so I don't run it too often in case it uh, gives up. But I'm risking it today, it is the Hornby H-Class. A really, really lovely loco, it's got some southern coaches as well. So enjoy the running session, there are lots of other pre-grouping tank engines to spot, except one of them isn't pre-grouping, so see if you can figure out which one it is, and let me know down in the comments. Okay, enjoy the running session. So, as you can clearly see, she's a fantastic runner. A little bit of intermittent behaviour at the slow speeds, but certainly as soon as you get her up to these uh, sort of more constant speeds, the higher speeds, she's a lot more reliable. So overall, the performance is very, very good. Yep, overall, I can't really fault the performance. It's, uh, it's spot on for all intents and purposes. Lovely H-class there. Really love that one. And so yeah, with the Class 5, another thing of note is the noise. Normally, I remark about the grinding metal noise that you get from the Blackman Locos, but this one runs almost completely silently, as you can probably hear, or not hear. <laughs> yeah, very quiet, very smooth as well. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Will you be getting one of these when Blackman bring them out again, or are they a little bit too overpriced for you? For me it's a bit of a love-hate thing because it's an absolutely gorgeous model but I can't help but feel it's not worth the RRP. However, if you go to one of the retailers such as Hatton's, obviously you don't have to pay the full price so I suppose it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Alright, so let's take a look at the ratings for the very, very beautiful LMYR Class 5. So on the detail then, I've given it a 5 out of 5, I've given it 5 stars. I wonder if that is a tiny bit generous because the cab, I think we've seen better cabs on other models, but on balance, I think the level of detail generally is deserving of a 5 star. Performance, similarly, I have given this a 5 star. The slow speed performance is really, really good, and even though the pulling power isn't what it perhaps ought to have been given the weight, I would say it's still reasonably prototypical. It can manage 4 or 5 coaches on on a flat layout without a problem so I don't think we can deduct any marks for the lack of pulling power and as I say it does run very very nicely smoothly and quietly so can't really fault it the mechanism I am going to give it just a four star because obviously it does have the basic three pole motor and the pickups don't quite work as well as they ought to uh, especially on the non-driven wheels but as I say there's no major problem so I'm not going to fault it any further than just one star quality then I'm giving it very 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 close to five star I don't tend to give a five star to a loco unless it's got a spot on five pole can motor um, however I think the quality on the rest of the model is very 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 good very very high quality build in fact with an awful lot of die cast Okay, so the only major criticism I've got really is the value. Now, I only paid, um, well, I think it was less than 100 for mine. Uh, the RRP used to be £115, now it's 130 which I think is just too much given other models on the market of a similar level of detail. So I've given it three stars. It's not a terrible price. I think we've definitely seen worse. And because the model is so good, the value for money is a little bit better than it might have been. Uh, so yeah, three stars there. Overall then, that is 8.59 out of 10. A very good score. Is it good enough for the top five? Yes, it is. It's just in the top five, fifth uh, above the whole class and below the Midland 1F. Yes, a very good model, this. One of Backman's best. So it's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? And that 242 wheel configuration uh, never ceases to thrill me, to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? And completely unique. I wonder if there are any other... 242 locos out there that have not been made yet. I'd love to get some more. All 
All right then, folks. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that review. If there are any other locos that I've not looked at for a long time that you'd like me to revisit, please do let me know because uh, hopefully I can do a bit of a better job of reviewing them now than I used to. Oh, it makes me shudder thinking of some of those old videos I put up, so I'm desperate to replace them. Either way, folks, thank you for your company, thank you for your time, and I will see you all very, very soon. All right, cheers, everybody.